Hi everybody, welcome back. I hope you're all doing well. So in today's video. Hey guys, so I'm making this video to spread awareness. I'm just gonna cut to the chase. Yesterday, I almost died jumping out of a moving lift because the lift driver was trying to kidnap me. So I work at the Clinton outlets in Connecticut. If you live in Connecticut, you know the Clinton Outlets is exit 63. I live in New Haven, Connecticut, which is about 30, 30 minute rise. When I got a female driver, I was so happy, y'all. So happy. And the crazy thing about it is Lyft had gave me a female driver and then Lyft switched it and gave me another female driver because she was closer. Yesterday, um... Lyft gave me a notification saying, okay, your ride is outside. So, you know, I got my things ready, got my bag. I, I went outside. I worked. The, the license plate, the car, the driver, everything matched the picture on Lyft. Everything was correct. Okay. The driver, she had like this accent. I can tell she was foreign. Before we got off exit 63, she was on the phone with, with some man. And she was like explaining to them what I was wearing. I didn't think too much of it because first she was speaking another language. I don't know what she was speaking on the phone with this man. She, the language she was speaking, it sounded like it was she was from the Middle East. Or But she said something in English when she was on the phone with the man, which is weird because she was speaking another language. And then all of a sudden she started to say dark, dark skin, red sweater. When she said, she said, no, she said red sweater, dark skin. When she said red sweater, dark skin, I had on a red sweater and I'm dark skin. So she was describing whoever she was on the phone with, she was describing me to that person, what I was wearing, how I looked, which was weird. I did not, I did not think too much of it because I was about to be to work. I was almost to my destination. So you know what? Even though I was nervous, I'm like, okay, I'm going to just let, I'm going to just let God handle the rest. You know, I'm about to be to my destination. I'm going to just let her take me to my destination. But we got off exit 63. Okay, so I'm back to finish the story. I'm so sorry, y'all. I could not finish the video the other day. I was not right emotionally. I had a lot on my plate. Everything was the incident happened. That is why my face looks better. But the damage is, is already done. The trauma is still there. Let me finish the story. Okay, so we got off exit 63. The Lyft driver, she had to turn left to get to my destination once you get off exit 63. The Lyft driver had her left turn signals on. Mind you, she had her left turn signals on. So she knew, even she knew she had to turn left. Even the GPS told her she had to turn left. Guess what she did? She ended the ride and got back on the highway. We were almost to my destination. She got back on the highway while I was still in the car. I'm like telling her, ma'am, you passed my destination. What are you doing? This lady did not say nothing. And I'm like, girl, what are you doing? She told me to shut up. She didn't have to tell me nothing else. I jumped out that car so fast. I jumped out the car while it was moving. That shit hurt so bad. I thought I was going to die because she was going fast. Like, you know, when somebody's trying to kidnap you, they try to go fast. They try to like get away with it fast. That's how fast she was going while I was jumping out the car. You know, that day, I thought I was never going to see my mom again. I thought I was never going to see my dad again. I thought it was it. Like, it felt like a movie, y'all. It felt like I was in a movie. Like, I keep replaying the scenario in my head. When I jumped out the car, all I can remember is holding my head. I was bleeding out my head. I was bleeding in my other parts of the body. But it was mainly in my, my head. And I was holding my head while I was walking to the plaza because I needed to go somewhere where there was a lot of people just in case she tried to come back and, you know, so I just walked to the plaza. It literally took me like 10 seconds. That's when I called the cop. Mind you, this incident happened a couple days before my birthday. I thought I wasn't going to make it home to spend time with my family for my birthday. Like, I really thought that I was going to die. Tell me why, while I was walking to the plaza, it was so many cars out there, nobody stopped for me. Nobody stopped for me. Nobody asked me if I was okay. Luckily, I had the sense to call 911 myself. But what if I couldn't call 911? Who gonna call 911 for me? 
You see what I mean? If I see somebody just jumped out of the car, if I see somebody bleeding out their head, crying, walking to the plaza, I'm gonna stop the car and ask them if they're okay. Especially if it's a, if it's a young girl like me. Clearly, I just went through hell. So the fact that none of the cars stopped for me, they was all looking, y'all. When the cops came, the paramedics came. I got in the ambulance and I was transported to Yale New Haven Hospital all the way from Clinton. Mind you, I didn't even realize I, I was losing my memory until the amp the guy the paramedics asked me asked me what my age was. I couldn't answer. I didn't even know how old I was. That's how bad my memory was functioning. I think it's because I was going through so much trauma. So he asked me how old I was. I didn't even know. But then I remembered, wait. He asked me what my birthday was, and I'm like, wait, my birthday's coming up. June, so I, I said to him, I said, June 25th, 2001. Like, I was so uncertain. Honestly, when I saw this video, I felt really bad for her. I felt sad. I was so happy that she survived. But there was a little bit within me that didn't believe the story. A lot of things are not adding up here. So you didn't finish filming. How quickly did your wounds heal? You know, how did you get out of the car? So many things were going on in my head. And I was beating myself. I was feeling bad for not believing the story. Okay. I was feeling so bad. I gave her grace. I was like, it could have happened to her. And I should be appreciative that her face is not on the news. Um, she didn't become is this I can't say that was statistics. <laughs> statistic she didn't become a statistic okay so i was like whatever you need to stop being negative you know you need to stop being is it cynical i don't know what the word is so i was you know i felt sorry for her i went about my way tell me why this morning i went on tiktok <laughs> and first scroll second scroll third scroll the story became bigger okay and people are coming out and they they are exposing this woman and the things they are saying if any of it is true my god <laughs> but i don't want to spoil it for you let's get into the responses to her video and what people had to say about her because i um i, I you know I, although i felt like there was something off about the story i didn't expect this i didn't expect this and everything that they're saying but anyway let's get into that and i'm gonna come back and talk some more and leave your thoughts and opinions in the comment section thank you let's get into that y'all know the video that's going viral the girl andre who claimed that she jumped out of the uber driver car there's a very big chance that that girl is lying like i went to it with the girl all she did was lie like this girl pretended like she moved all the way to atl and was doing real estate now where she fucked up at was she put a real number on her page, her real estate number on her page. And one of my homegirls called and they didn't know who she was. So that's when I knew she was lying. She would edit all her pictures, add all these different filters. She looked like a whole completely different person. She pretended like she had a BBL. Yeah, the girl don't got no BBL. She don't got no Tesla. She don't got nothing that she be claiming that she has. Mind you, she lives in Connecticut. Why is you acting like you live in ATL? You don't live in ATL, boo. Yeah, the scariest part of it all is this girl was posting videos of Loyal. Jada, Jada Wade's son? Yeah. Posting videos of Loyal. Like videos that Jada would post or like one of her siblings or whoever would post of Loyal. And she would put her voice in the background making it seem like she's with them. She used to be like, yeah, I'm at ATL you waiting for Jada. You showing off for the girls? Yeah, Jada Loyal. don't know you. I'm actually <laughs> scared. I'm still scared to this day. Because you don't do no weird shit like that. These are just like some things that, that that girl did. She scammed the whole fucking city. Like the girl is insane. She's nuts. Stop donating y'all money to that girl. Actually, y'all need to go back. And y'all need to get y'all money back. Because I know she lying. I know she talented. I know she put all of that on her face by herself. Probably punched herself in the lip. <laughs> all jokes aside for real, y'all. Like, mm-mm. So usually I don't do this. I grew a lot. I'm not drama or nothing like that. But I just can't sit and watch. This came to my spirit. I can't sit and watch somebody scam people that I know is a scammer. 
This girl, when I was sick in a hospital in ICU, she scammed me for $1,350. I have proof, messages, everything. She's a scammer. She'll do anything, say anything to get a dollar. I mean, say anything. She will do anything. Like, she's told me these same stories before and scammed me out of $1,350. to $350. So be very careful with this story that sound so believable. And even if it is, may God bless her. Um, I don't wish bad on nobody. I would never wish death on nobody by the end of the day. She's a known scammer. I'm from New Haven. So she make a fool like, you know, TikTok and social media. But I know her personally. And she's known for scamming. Um, plenty of people could back this up. Plenty of people know her. And if y'all go down to my page from like two years or last year, you will see that I have blasted her before for scamming. Like this is what she's known for in New Haven. Um, a lot of She owe a lot of people money in New Haven. So be very careful when you guys are sending your hard-earned money to this girl. Story may sound sad. Story may sound believable. Anybody could come to social media and start crying and saying something happened to them for money. And be saying that she may have made, I don't know. Um, but like I said, it came to my spirit to just to put this out there so people could know. This girl, Drea, is a scammer. She scams real, and uh, she owes a lot of us money in New Haven. So you TikTokers, be safe and be easy when y'all sending this girl money, cause she has a GoFundMe. This is this is scam. This whole thing screams scam. She did this to me before. This this is a scam. Um, I'm sorry, I just can't watch people get scammed out of money. People work hard for their money, so y'all be careful, cause I had to learn the hard way. So, this is the girl. Like, literally, she makes herself look like other people. We from the same town. Like, she's known for this. She knows how to make hospital notes, doctor's notes, all types of text messages she done made up to me when I got scammed. She had me thinking she got her body done, her face done. She really was out getting money. Like, I was like, oh, okay, my girl done got her face done. My girl done got her body done. I was like, soups. Whole time it was at. If you could scam your face, scam your body, you'll scam anybody. This is her for real. Like, that's the real her. As y'all can see the videos. She was having people thinking she got her face done. She had, she was friends with Jada Wada. Now you got people thinking you got you kidnapped yourself. Okay? You you that's you you kidnapped you. Um But why wasn't no police reports shown? Why didn't you call the cops? Where was why you didn't record this? We live in a social media world. Everything we do, we eat a piece of steak, we eat a piece of carrot, we record it. Why you didn't record the ladies saying what you had on? Why wasn't none of this stuff recorded? Like, why you didn't record you in the hospital? So people could really support your healing. Now the GoFundMe is took down, they said. You done scam those people off their money. God is going to deal with you. And if that did happen, like I said, he's already dealing with you. Stop scamming people and go get a job. Huh? So me personally, knowing the girl, Drea, just just not even aside of me knowing her the story sounds crazy like she's asking people to pay for her healing baby i don't went through a lot okay i done had such like baby listen if we can make go fund me's for healing journeys i need one today because i literally almost lost my life literally been in the icu so many times I almost needed new lungs and lung transplants. So, baby, let me make me a GoFundMe. If it's that easy. We as people, we have to realize that there is a world that we live in that is of evil. This girl saying that this lady was trying to kidnap her, describing her clothes. Why didn't she record the lady doing that? Everybody pulls their phone out. We live in a social media world. Why you didn't start pulling your phone? Where's the police report? Where, where's the police report of all of the things, the accusations that you were stating that this lady did to you? Oh, they try to take you from your mom and your dad. You have medical. They gave you the bill the next day. 
What trauma are you suffering from? Those bruises on your face? And I'm never questioning one story, but it just doesn't make sense. You're a scammer. You're trying to scam people out of their hard-earned money like you did me. You scammed me out of $13.50. I know her in real life. Like, she's from New Haven. I'm from New Haven. She owes so many of us money. Doing the same thing. Get up crying. Just go to work. Get a job. Okay? I'm going to need you to get a job. I don't even believe that you work at Clinton. Um, get a job. You, you always trying to look for the next scam. You was a, lived in Atlanta, left Atlanta because you scammed so many people in Atlanta. Now you back and you just looking for your next come up. Just get a job. Work like the rest of us. You do not be blessed. And if that did happen to you, let's just say it did. You will reap what you sow. All these people you scammed, including me, God don't play. Okay, yeah, I'm on my way home. But I had to get on here and I had to talk about that girl, Drea Nicole. First of all, not Drea Nicole from Port Mines. I'm talking about Drea Nicole. The girl got on here talking about she got kidnapped. Um, well, I'm going to get kidnapped in the lift. In the lift. Man, y'all, I did not do no fact check then. I just ended up reposting it because a lot of shit do be going on and be happening. But a lot of people came out with like some fact checking stuff and just showing like how she's be she always be scamming to get money on GoFundMe and all this other shit. I just got on here to say that people who do that shit irritate the entire fuck out of me. And I don't give no fuck if anybody wanna call me a hater because when you talk about where you wanna go in life and you see that other people is doing shit with minimum effort people be like oh you hating you hating you hating call me her because i'm pissed off that she's getting that she came on here scamming and lying like so many people do they get on the internet they get on here and they and they lie and they scam they way to the fucking top and make money and earn followers and do all this other shit but i'm sitting on here genuinely making good content editing all this shit and tiktok got me stuck at a certain amount of views and i go to jamaica for five days y'all like i don't give a fuck i'm pissed i'm pissed because people get on this thing scamming and taking innocent fucking money bro that's the shit that gets to me and the people that's not on that scamming that's trying to get to where they need to be at, it just takes so much longer. But if I was on here to get to, if I was, if I was to get on here and tell y'all a lie about some shit, then, then I would get the support. If y'all believe that girl and that love story, 20 seconds in, you couldn't tell it was fake. I think you should ask God for discernment. And I also believe that you should ask him to show you what it looks like to be guided away from social media. Um, the temptation of social media gets you. It means you will easily believe anything that is portrayed on social media. And that's frightening. Yeah, I, I understand that sometimes when we see certain things on social media, it, it can be very touching. Okay. And I'm someone who is almost always on TikTok you know to bring you stories and things like that i'm always on tiktok and to be honest i see a lot of people with like disabilities who are lives people who have been affected by so many things that is going on in this world and when i first started when i see people like i feel i feel I, i'm an empath okay i feel so like deeply for people so i'll go out of my way send them money and so on and so forth but it's gotten to that point like you're seeing this person in the mud you know today you send money that you think is enough to help and then as time goes on it's like every day they are sitting in the mud if you know what I mean, okay? Every day you come on TikTok, they are sitting in the same position, in the same mud. And you're like, their life is going on 24-7. And it's like, is it real? Like, is this your job? Is is this, do you, do you get where I'm going with this? And I'm not saying that we shouldn't have empathy for people, but I'm getting to that place where it's like, even when I see, I scroll now. Okay, and so with things like this, 
it pains my heart. Okay, because it's like the boy who cried wolf. You know, when the people who actually need the help and would actually benefit from the help that people have to offer to them, you know, come on, we will be like, mm, is this a lie? Is this true? Are this coming us? Because of people like this, you created a whole GoFundMe trying to get people to pay your medical bills. You know, claiming that, oh my God, when you know that is not true, you're taking the scam to a different level, allegedly. I need to throw that in there because I, to be honest, I still don't know if it's true or if it's not true. But with everything I'm seeing, I cannot say that what they are saying is not true. From people who knew you from school to like, babe, sis, there's so many women who are being trafficked every single day. Who, who are going through, like people are losing their children, their daughters, you know, their sisters, their moms, and you're here trying to make a living out of it. And that also by lying. Is everything okay? We're trying to scam people out of their money? <clears throat> oh my God, this, this is too much. What happened to regular nine to five jobs? Okay. You can get a nine to five job. And if you're not, uh, uh, one of those people who love the nine to five job, people are selling hair, selling nails, selling lashes, selling lip glosses, selling clothes. You know, people are on TikTok, people are on Instagram, YouTube, like myself. Like people are trying so many other ways to make money. You can do that too. But. Don't lie to people about things that are not true because when you actually need the help and when others who actually need the help come, we are going to start being like, is this true? Is it a lie? Should I help? Should I not help? Stop. Stop it. I'm all for supporting women and women empowerment, but this is not empowering, sis. This is not empowering. Sis, you need to stop. You need to stop. At this point in time, I'm glad that this came out. Maybe this is the last time, but I'm sure if she doesn't come on social media and she's a scammer, she's going to continue doing it in so many other ways. Okay. But I'm glad that she, she came to this point and people came to expose it. Okay. So if you are into that kind of lifestyle, you need to stop. It's not going to help you in the long run. All right. And let the people who actually need the help get the help that they need. That's all I'm going to say. But leave your thoughts and opinions in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you again with another video. Take care of yourselves. Bye.